a News Active 3 special report. The tragedy and the aftermath. Here again is WKZO-TV's Jim Roberts. Good evening. The tornadoes that struck Kalamazoo and the surrounding area this past Tuesday are being called the greatest disaster ever to hit our area. We at News Active 3 have tried throughout the week to keep you informed and up to date through all of the rapidly changing events. We think it's important now to try to put this all in perspective, this disaster, to get an idea of what's happened to us, what will be happening in the weeks and months to come. We've asked our News Active 3 reporters to join us today to help explain what it's like to be part of all this. Terry Kurtwright, as you know, who along with Trudy Arnell, they were eyewitnesses to the approach of that tornado. He's in our studio at this hour. And Terry, we'd like to pick up the story with you at the beginning, just to see what your impressions are, what happened during this terrifying experience. Well, Jim, a lot of people out on the streets uh, after the tornado hit uh, claimed that I was stupid but, uh, and a little crazy, but uh, I want to guarantee you that we took every precaution necessary and uh, basically we were just doing our job. It all started just before 4 o'clock. A viewer had called to report that some wind damage on M43 near Goebbels had occurred. So Trudy Arnell and I grabbed the equipment and immediately we went out the back door. But before we left the station, I did something that I don't usually do. I took the equipment in the front seat with me just in case we saw something. We were traveling northwest on Howard. We stopped for a light at the intersection of West Michigan and Howard. Then just behind the campus theater, we stopped, or we rather we spotted the funnel cloud. The rain came down in buckets. Instantly it stopped and the environment became very, very still. In front of us, past the tornado. I decided to zoom in on the debris that was winding around inside of the funnel cloud. Then as we watched the cloud pass us, we proceeded on Howard with caution, but camera still rolling. The rain started again and it made it very difficult to get any clear pictures of the tornado as it headed toward the upper northwest area of Kalamazoo. These pictures were taken within five minutes after the twister ripped this neighborhood apart. This destruction occurred along Olney Street. Power lines were down, trees had been plucked from the ground, and residents ran through the streets in shock. When the tornado had finished chewing up this neighborhood, it proceeded to downtown Kalamazoo, a very clear picture of a mass of high pressure and winds that would very soon leave five people dead and destroy millions of dollars worth of property. The Tuesday twisters missed a lot of homes in Kalamazoo and surrounding areas, but really, no one goes untouched by what happened. Out there, very obvious from the beginning along the west side, but the greatest destruction from the twister lay still ahead. The heart of downtown Kalamazoo, uh, reporter Jim Rennick and I were downtown within minutes of the touchdown in the central business district. And what we found down there when we got there was a scene of destruction almost beyond belief. The storm had struck shortly after 4 o'clock, catching many shoppers and office workers almost by surprise. The twister had hopscotched the central business district, seemingly choosing all the city's major buildings and landmarks for demolition. Bronson Park had become a huge heap of twisted and torn trees, and we saw emergency medical crews trying to revive a victim in the park. The first, as it turns out, of many victims that day. The buildings that had been the pride of downtown, the downtown Kalamazoo area all sustained very heavy damage. Nearly every window blown out of the ISB bank building. Hunks of glass still falling out of many of them, crashing to the street below. And the Kalamazoo Center, as you see there, with windows blown out and merchandise from the shops scattered on the streets and sidewalks. A look up at some of the city's tallest office buildings revealed walls torn away, offices exposed, papers and other de debris still fluttering down through the air. The city's downtown Kalamazoo Mall, the first of its kind in the nation, was devastated. All the stores and shops along the mall had taken the brunt of the storm's fury, but some of the worst damage came at the Gilmore Department Store, where the entire rear wall had been peeled away, sending a mountain of debris plunging down on the street. Later, two of the dead would be found in the rubble there. The sound of sirens pierced the air as dazed residents walked about, many of them asking about friends or co-workers missing since the storm struck. Teams of police began a search of the hardest hit buildings, looking for any victims still trapped, and eyewitnesses told of shock and terror. Twister coming over the county building. I told everybody to get out of there, and there was a mass exodus down to the stairwell. 
uh, hundreds of people got downstairs approximately and people were coming in off the street and into the downstairs of the ISB building. It was packed and there's no word on injuries or anything right now. Police are too busy taking care of everything. We don't know. The whole front of the ISB building is demolished window-wise. The windows what, are all out. What was the exit of the people like? Was there a lot of panic or anything? Not really. Um, people were kind of weren't sure it was really happening until they felt the suction in the, the air. I heard a, a noise similar to a, a train, like they say, and I turned the radio down in my car and turned around and looked up over the, over the top of those buildings. It was just coming down, tearing up chunks of, of roof, just throwing it all over, and I opened my door to get out, and the wind was so strong I could hardly, I could hardly close, the, close my door, so I just laid down on the floor of my car and... That thing went over and it lifted my car off the ground, moved it around a little bit, moved through the two, through the two cars right behind me across the street. It was scary, really scary. As with any tragedy, there was a great deal of confusion in the hours immediately after that storm. But when News Act of Three went on the air with the special reports at 7 o'clock and again at 7.30, this much was known about what had taken place just a few hours before. First of all, at least two tornadoes had moved in from the west, touching down in the eastern part of Van Buren County. Then there was the roaring tornado heading toward Kalamazoo, hitting the city's Westwood neighborhood. And then snaking along the West Main Street area in downtown. As of 7 o'clock, city officials were reporting seven people dead. That figure, of course, was later revised downward. At least 50 others had been injured, and they were being treated for injuries. A state of emergency had been declared. A curfew was clamped on the city. The downtown area was now off limits to essential personnel. Hundreds of state troopers had joined officers from the city, the township, and county departments, and help was being rushed in from other counties as well. As night began to fall, rescue workers were still digging through the debris in search of any more victims. Tim, it really wasn't until the uh, first light of that Wednesday morning that the full scope and the full impact became apparent, and a helicopter tour of the area gave a pretty graphic account of the damage and proved that it was greater than anyone had even imagined. Also, Russ, Mary Ann, and the 3rd District Congressman Howard Wolpe, they toured the hardest hit areas of the city early Wednesday morning. And we'll have that, we'll have tape of them coming up here very shortly. What we see here is a uh, down zoo from a helicopter that was brought in by WJBK Channel to help us out, to help you and all of us get a better look at the situation in downtown Kalamazoo at that time. Again, that was courtesy of WJBK in Detroit. As we see, Congressman Howard Wolpe, they toured the hardest hit early Wednesday morning. Some of the out in force along West Main Street trying to restore power and to clean. Now this is the Westwood area of the city. This is the way it looked. It looked out city with homes, trees, tires. Chief, you know no one was seriously in injured in this area, but the damage, of course, was right. Mayor Annan and were shot devastation and talked to several people who lost homes and property. The determination to rebuild was already beginning to surface less than twice after the tornadoes ripped through. After leaving back down towards downtown Kalamazoo. And of course there were more examples of the tornado's destructive power. They could be seen virtually everywhere. The first bit of optimistic news also came on Wednesday morning. That was the word that the final death toll stood at just five. Instead of the early confusion, there had been seven killed, as we saw it then. However, that was revised downward. Some of the victims apparently had been counted twice. And then there were more reinsurances came when city officials announced that uh, what were thorough searches of the damaged areas had turned up no additional victims whatsoever. Still, when the names of the dead were released, the list came. The list of the dead included 31-year-old Marie Gilman of Kalamazoo, who was killed when a wall fell on top of her at the laundromat. Then 49-year-old Francis Hardy of Pawpaw, motorcyclist, killed when a tree struck him at Academy and Rose. Then 64-year-old Lucia McFall of Kalamazoo. She was killed when part of the Gilmore department store collapsed on top of her. 
26-year-old Christiana Wellington also died in the rubble of Gilmore's. And 67-year-old Raymond Moyer, he was killed as he was loading a fuel truck in Comstock Township. Russ? Jim, although that damage in the downtown Kalamazoo area was very graphic, Kalamazoo County was not the first target of Tuesday's tornado wrath. The eastern section of Van Buren County sustained heavy damage just before 4 o'clock in the afternoon. The twister came along a path consisting of M43, first hitting the city of Bangor and then striking the Glendale and Goebbels areas. Several homes and farm buildings were either damaged or destroyed, along with many farm animals killed. The loss to one farmer alone was expected to exceed several million dollars. Everything we had, you know, except the house and the garage, and it totally destroyed the barns and uh, all the feeding facilities, and we lost approximately 20% of the hogs. Fortunately, no lives were lost in the Van Buren County area. Uh, there were only minor injuries reported. Almost immediately, though, the cleanup efforts started as people were, as people worked to return their lives to somewhat of a normal routine after that disaster. As the immediate shock of the tragedy began to wear off, a major question was if and when the residents and businesses might be able to recover from the loss. Reporter Trudy Arnell talked with a number of business owners in downtown Kalamazoo on Wednesday. She found a surprising sense of optimism there. Jim, there were no tears the day after in downtown Kalamazoo. No one was walking around asking why did it happen. Store owners simply did the only thing they could do, accept the reality of the disaster, and go on. Fear yesterday in downtown Kalamazoo was one of near panic and disbelief. Buildings were ravaged, trees toppled over, and businessmen saw years of work and dedication crumble before them. But this morning, Kalamazoo's downtown mall took on an almost ghost-like quality. There are only law enforcement officers, cleanup crews, and store owners and proprietors in the downtown Kalamazoo area today. And the feeling is one of optimism, of rebuilding for the future. Well, I'm sure we're amply covered, but I will imagine we'll get right back to work and get everything repaired in shape as far as we know. That's what we'll do as fast as we can. You know, you're still in a state of shock. Yeah, How do you feel? I'm still queasy and nervous. I feel much better today than I did yesterday. It's a lot more, you know, now that everything's covered and we know what we have to do and how to do it, it's a lot more plain and a lot easier to, you know, handle in my mind. So, there has been some concern among city officials that those businesses heavily damaged in the downtown area might feel it too expensive to rebuild there. So Kalamazoo Mayor Ed Annan has called a special city commission meeting for this Monday afternoon to discuss tax breaks and other benefits for the downtown merchants affected by the storm. That city effort, combined with the fiercely optimistic attitude of merchants like John Rollins, should soon have this devastated mall well on its way to recovery. Are you ready to go with the rebuilding? Oh, of course. I don't have any doubts about the future of this place. You know, this is Kalamazoo. This is not Ohio. <laughs> In Kalamazoo, Trudy Yarnell, News Active 3. The tornado will also cause another tremendous loss in the weeks ahead. Those figures will be added up. Kalamazoo City officials, in fact, they estimate that 5,000 jobs were wiped out by that twister this past Tuesday. Of the 5,000 jobs, 1,500 will remain unemployed for at least a month. Those individuals put out of work by the storm will be eligible for benefits from the state of Michigan and from the United States government as well. The Claridge Fan Division of Zern Industries, the Arvan Corporation, and a number of other companies leasing space in the Kalamazoo Box Board Company at Gibson and Pitcher were among the industrial type firms that uh, were damaged by the storm. It wasn't until uh, Thursday, in fact, that the dollar estimates of all the damage and the exact size of the rebuilding effort became known. This is when city officials released their preliminary reports. John Graber covered that story. The initial estimate of $50 million in damage in the immediate Kalamazoo area was right on target. City manager Robert Bob released the figures this afternoon, and they look like this. 236 residential structures destroyed or damaged at a loss of $5,289,000. 150 commercial structures destroyed or damaged, the loss $16,558,000. 10 industrial structures destroyed or damaged, a loss of $7,331,000. 12 privately supported facilities destroyed or damaged at a loss of $4,316,000. 
public damages, $2,108,000. The local disaster share, which includes expenses and loss of revenue, $1,309,000. Damages outside the Kalamazoo city limits, $10,782,000. The total, $49,495,000. John Graber, News Active 3. In the wake of the devastation, there were immediate concerns over the future of Kalamazoo's vital commercial district. Some of the fears of a mass exodus of merchants from the damaged area were alleviated at a news conference held on Thursday. And Terry Kurtwright, of course, covered that particular story. Terry? That's right, Jim. After Tuesday's tornado, a lot of people were concerned about the future of downtown Kalamazoo. Folks were wondering if the mall area would turn into a ghost town. Well, Thursday, all the wondering, rumors, and talk were put to rest. Following Tuesday's storm, there was plenty of speculation about the future of downtown Kalamazoo. Some people were saying there's no future for our downtown. They thought stores that were severely damaged would just move out of the mall area. But this morning, following a brief meeting in Gilmore's men's department, all of that talk proved to be just talk. Gilmore's made a promise. There will be no more doubt about the store's role in the future of downtown Kalamazoo. Well, I'm glad to have this opportunity to mention it. We have never really been any question that we would not continue downtown. As a matter of fact, uh, the night of the tornado, I was in touch with all the directors, and they indicated then they were to go ahead and get back into business as quickly as we could. We have uh, get a new roof on. We have to barricade from the first floor through the sixth floor, uh, 30 feet in, and we have to uh, get our sprinkler and electrical and all that before we can get people in here to start cleaning up. Jarvis could not say how soon the store would be open again, but he did say it's possible that all six floors of Gilmore's could be back in operation within a year. Gilmore's took the initial step, and according to the president of the Downtown Kalamazoo Association, Phil Davis, all mall businesses will follow their lead. There's no indication at this time that there's going to be any businesses that aren't going to be able to reopen. Even though downtown Kalamazoo was devastated, it looks like this community spirit and dedication will prove to be a lot stronger than the winds that blew here on Tuesday. In Kalamazoo, Terry Kurtwright, News Active 3. But it was clear that the effort at coming back after the tornadoes would need a solid financial commitment. And local banks began gearing up for that almost immediately. Sheila Conlon followed the attempts to get the needed financial backing. Sheila? Yeah, that's right, Jim. The mood in Kalamazoo on Thursday, May 15th, had begun to change. What had been a pitch-in effort from neighbors and friends during the previous 48 hours was being replaced with the sinking reality of the damages. And before the attitude of those affected sank too low, banking officials came up with some solutions. On Thursday, the president of First National Bank and Trust said his lending institution would put aside millions of dollars to offer home improvement loans, reduce the auto financing rate temporarily from 16.5% to 12.5%, and for the business firms that were hit, a loan arrangement through the Economic it's Development Corporation. Things straightened and we can get some commitment from the other institutions to take part of the issue. That's going to be, that's going to be a, a, a quite, a, quite a program itself. And we can make it easy for the merchant and the manufacturer to, uh, to get into it. If, if we can accomplish that, I'll consider that meeting a success tomorrow. And first thing Friday morning, the top brass from all lending institutions gathered with the mayor and city manager to talk about large-scale solutions for the large-scale effort that would be needed to bail the businesses out of the financial rubble that made many of them feel as though they were buried beyond relief. In the case of, uh, like, uh, Claridge Fan or uh, the Gilmore's properties, uh, where we're looking at a lot of, of dollars, uh, the federal dollars most likely will not cover all that. And, that uh, would be federal disaster funds? Yes. Okay. And uh, what we want to do is be able to make their places better than what they were. And to do that, we're going to need long-term, low-interest capital to do it. And one of the methods of doing that is the EDC bond. And uh, it's never been pooled before, so we're sort of moving into a, a complete new, new area. And during the course of the upcoming week, more discussions will take place about ways to arrange funding sources and keep business firms in the area. All over the storm-damaged area, the effort at returning to at least some sense of normalcy was marked by a spirit of cooperation, a feeling of community effort. 
Our News Active 3 reporter Jim Rennick covered one aspect of that story. Cleanup operations in the Westwood neighborhood were going slowly but steadily today. Neighbors continued to pick up each other's twisted and torn property, and there was a strong desire to rebuild what was left from Tuesday afternoon. I think we really enjoy the area that we're living in now, and the uh, foundation to the house is in good shape, so we'll basically be able to just build the house up from uh, the ground up and maybe modify it more to our liking and uh, appreciate it a little bit more. The cost of rebuilding and replacing will run into the millions of dollars. Like most tragedies, this one hits the pocketbook as well as the heart. David Luce had purchased his home three years ago for $37,000. Today will cost nearly $60,000 to rebuild. Across the street from David Luce is the Westwood Church of God. It was one of the first structures hit on Tuesday. Well, we have been meeting and uh, certainly uh, planning at this point to build as well, if not better than before. We are very optimistic about the days ahead. There may, of course, be some of the people affected by Tuesday's tornadoes who will decide to move out of the area because of that tragedy. But it's a safe bet at this time that most of these people are going to stay here and rebuild. And there are a lot of reasons for that. But among those, the reason that, well, they just like the place. And they want to make that place theirs again. In Kalamazoo, Jim Ronick, News Active 3. The spirit of cooperation was also very evident at the St. Augustine uh, complex located in downtown Kalamazoo. John Graber of News Active 3 covered that aspect of that story, and here is his report. St. Augustine's has been a Kalamazoo landmark for more than 50 years. Today, much of it is rubble. The parochial building was destroyed, the elementary school building and chancery heavily damaged. Windows were blown out of the cathedral and rectory. Both buildings suffered roof damage. It's not a pretty sight, but the members of this parish have rolled up their sleeves and vowed to rebuild the complex. Nothing but positive results now coming. People coming together, working together, uh, showing their interest in one another in, in every way. It's magnificent. I, um, I'm glad to be in Kalamazoo because I've never seen a town like Kalamazoo before with the warmth that's in the town and now in this disaster as I say, all the assistance we've been offered uh, makes you almost want to cry. A lot of work will have to be done on the cathedral building before it can be used again, but members of the parish attended special services at another church this morning. Services are also planned for Sunday at Stetson Chapel on the Kalamazoo College campus. If there's any one thing that matches the destruction of this city, it's the commitment on the part of the people who live here to rebuild. We've found that everywhere we've gone in the past few days, and we found it again here today at the St. Augustine Cathedral Complex. John Graber, News Active 3. That spirit of cooperation all through the community was something that was talked about through the entire time of the week of the storm, and help did continue to pour into the devastated areas throughout that week. On Friday, National Guard troops with heavy equipment rumbled into Kalamazoo County to assist in clearing away debris. But another potentially serious problem cropped up. There was confusion over the extent of federal disaster aid to this area. Government officials at all levels called news conferences continuously to explain that apparently a hitch had developed in the federal assistance plan. While the president's declaration of, the, of a disaster area status for Kalamazoo and Van Buren counties meant aid would be coming for homeowners and businesses, there was no mention made of reimbursing the local governments for their expenses estimated in the millions of dollars. Finally, after a frantic evening of phone calls to Washington and after some charges that politics had played a role, Mayor Annan and Congressman Wolpe told News Active 3 on Friday night that federal officials had finally clarified their stand and that the city and the surrounding municipalities would be reimbursed for all their tornado-related expenses. In tragedies of this sort, it seems that fate always plays a role. That factor beyond the control of human beings could often determine which of us would be victims and which would be survivors. Reporter Tom McWilliams, in fact, found some poignant and some very touching stories in the tornado aftermath. And walked out either with her wash or to check on the conditions of the weather. And when she came running back in, she was the person who warned everybody that there was something coming and they had better either get in the basement or get outside or do something. And at that point, apparently what she did is she ran behind the wall, the west wall, the east wall of the building, and at that time it collapsed on her. 
In a matter of minutes yesterday afternoon, Mary Gilman had gone from hero to victim. But fate had entered the picture on not one but two counts. Mary Gilman and her new husband of three days were making plans for a honeymoon in Hawaii. The couple was married just last weekend by Dr. Paul Meyer, Lutheran campus chaplain and history professor at Western Michigan University. Her, her name was Mary Rocks until Saturday, and that's the poignancy of it all. On Saturday, she changed her name, of course, to Mary Gilman because it was my privilege to join her in marriage to Steve Gilman. Uh, this was a beautiful couple. They were 30, 31 years old. This was their first marriage in both cases. They wanted to wait till the, exactly the right person came along. And uh, I can recall uh, pronouncing the vows over them this past Saturday, looking for a long and happy life for both of them. So, so this is crushing. I just can't believe this happened. And then there are those who today are counting themselves lucky, like the family here on Northampton, where a grandmother was babysitting her grandchildren. They were playing on an upper floor. When the grandmother spotted the tornado, she rushed them to the basement. Moments later, the second floor of the home was gone. In Kalamazoo, Tom McWilliams, News Active 3. Well, the first indication that things were returning to normal in the Kalamazoo area happened today when the downtown area was opened up once again to its residents. Because of a strictly enforced curfew, spectators had seen the storm's destruction solely through the media. But today, thousands and upon thousands drove through and they strolled the same path taken by that tornado last Tuesday. Many commended the city for the immediate action to put Kalamazoo back together. But the general feeling was one of both astonishment and thankfulness that more people were not killed in this tragedy. It's probably going to be some time before any of us really understand the full impact of what these storms did to us as individuals and as a community. But News Active 3 News Editor Hugh Harper, who has covered the news in this town, this area, for more than three decades now, he has some thoughts on what we've come through and what some of the challenges will be in the days ahead. You? Fred, Jim, you know, for the past 33 years, I've reported about a number of tragic events that have occurred in the Channel 3 area, but never within the deep recesses of my mind can I recall such an impact on people. I believe the key word of this latest disaster is, again, people. How they're affected, how they're coping with it. I took a walk through the downtown area and saw the people making a Herculean effort to bring order out of chaos. Windows, as you've seen, were boarded up, fallen trees are being cut up and hauled away, uh, broken glass swept up. And the people, of course, I speak of are ordinary citizens, as well as city parks crews, uh, power company employees, policemen, National Guardsmen, calling the governor, by the governor, to help clean up the debris. I saw human service agencies passing out coffee and donuts. Of course, people in the village of Augusta most vividly recall that day in 1977, when a damaging tornado hit their community, and of course, so did the people of Comstock Township. And again, people responded and cleaned up their community. Michigan's worst tornado struck the city of Flint on June the 8th, 1953, killing 116 people. That same year, 127 died in tornadoes that ripped through Port Huron in the Thumb area. You know, some years ago, someone coined the phrase that life is good in Kalamazoo and it will be again. Later, the phrase which began as a gimmick to attract conventions proclaimed, yes, there really is a Kalamazoo. I'd like to repeat that. Yes, there really is a Kalamazoo, and I say there always will be a Kalamazoo thanks to people. Thank you, Hugh. As we have tried to do during this past hour, we have attempted to show you what happened in the city of Kalamazoo and the surrounding area during this past week. Five people have been killed. Nearly 100 others have been injured. The property damage has been estimated at more than $50 million. Despite the tragic and the staggering statistics, it's still difficult to really appreciate what happened or perhaps what could have happened. Now, to get the true feeling, you must see it for yourself. The view from Michigan Avenue, from Bronson Park, from the Kalamazoo Mall, Gilmore's, or perhaps a countless number of other locations in this city will absolutely amaze you. It'll take your breath away, in fact. You'll walk away saying to yourself, isn't it amazing how anyone could survive the destructive power of this tornado at all? You will be impressed by the tremendous amount of work that has been accomplished since last Tuesday afternoon in our city, our community, and our area here. And there's plenty of work left to do. But there is also a feeling of confidence that that job will be completed and will be completed very quickly. Thank you for watching our efforts tonight. Thank you for helping your city. I'm Jim Rock, Active 3.
News Active 3, a presentation of WKZO-TV and the Fetzer Television Service.